If you're using the flambient technique for photographing real estate interiors, but you're seeing orange shadows, don't worry, this is easy enough to avoid while you're on site, and it's easy and fast to fix in editing as well, and that's what this episode is all about. For those who don't know me, my name is Nathan Cool. I'm a professional real estate photographer in Southern California, and I use Flambient for all of my work. I have so for years. I've shot thousands of homes here in the local area, and I've written best-selling books specifically on real estate photography as well. And over the years, I've seen this come up. I know what's causing it. It's just simple achromaticity. In other words, we are missing some of the color if you're flashing very hard and you're seeing harsh shadows. So. How to avoid it, how to fix it. First, how to avoid it. One, you're flashing too hard, more than likely. What's happening is the harsher the light, the harsher the shadows, the harsher the shadows, the less color from those achromatic areas in those shadows. So when you add ambient luminance on top of it, you're gonna get discoloration. Some photographers will just revert back to using normal blending mode. Don't, it's gonna give you an accurate color. There's a much better way to do that to fix it. I'm gonna show that here in a second along with a couple little bonus tips on doing some of this editing in general. But avoiding it, even if you're facing your flash straight up, remember, never face it forward. You don't want it forward. You wanna have it straight up if you're doing a ceiling bounce. But a lot of times doing a ceiling bounce, if it is straight up, sometimes you do need to tilt it back just a little bit, but moreover, the biggest thing, to get the most diffused light, which will then have the softest shadows, and then it won't be so achromatic in those harsh shadowed areas, is simply to lower the height of the flash. Make sure that the flash is at least above the camera height. But when you're seeing those harsh shadows and you're in very small rooms, there is no problem with putting the flash just right above the camera at a very low height, angle it back just a little bit. If it gets a little bit of color cast, that's easy enough to fix. It's a lot better than dealing with some of these harsh shadows. So if you're flashing correctly though, and you still have some problems, which can happen, and it does happen to me from time to time, it's easy enough to fix. Let's see how that's done. So this is a great example where shadows are cast. We can see them up here by that ceiling fan. This is just the flash shot, but there was very little room. This was a very tiny room. And even though I had the flash just right above the camera height, I'm still getting some harsh shadows. Now these aren't as harsh as they can be if you were pointing the flash forward. But for me, this is a very harsh shadow. If you get soft shadows, they're probably okay. They're not losing some of that chromaticity. They're not completely achromatic. If you're seeing some color, they'll probably be just fine. But in this case, I know we're going to get some problems. Let's take a look why. So turn on here. You can see my layers here. Flashes at the bottom, typical flambient blending. And then I'm going to be using this ambient layer. Turn it on and turn it into a 50-50. There we go, where it's luminosity mode here. And you can see that its opacity is 50%. By the way, if you're not familiar with this technique and doing the flambient blending, I have a link to my real estate photography series down in the description for this video. Book number one on interiors will help you along with this. Anyways, back to the problem at hand. Now that we zoom in here, we can start seeing some of those orange shadows appear. If we were to use 100% luminance on this, we can really see that the orange shadow is there. So no matter what we do to brush in some ambient light, we're still going to be seeing some issues here. There's that orange streak coming off that one because that one was the harshest shadow right there. A lot of those other shadows went away pretty much, but there's still some yellowing around here. So I'm going to show how to fix this no matter what. First, let's take it back to our 50-50. So here we are, typical 50-50, 50% opacity in luminosity blending mode. So we want to first be able to fix these from getting the right type of ambient up there. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this ambient layer and I'm gonna do it by pressing Control J. Then I'm going to change its opacity to 100%. I did that with keystrokes, but you can see here, I brought the opacity up to 100%. Then add a layer mask. I'm going to go up to the menus and go layer, layer mask, and then hide all. There's a lot of ways to do this. That's just my preferred way. Take a brush at a, about a 30% flow. You can see I'm using about 30% here. Make sure that it's a very soft brush. You can see over here, like with other blending, I'm using a soft brush with 0% hardness. 
Now I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so we can see what we're doing. So we'll go in just a tad more, there we go. And then using this brush, I'm gonna now brush in those areas of luminance. You might have to zoom out, whatever you do to feel comfortable making this. It's also an opportunity to add other areas of luminance that you want. Maybe I want a little bit more over here on the wall, but the biggest concentration is of course, to make sure that we can get rid of the shadows even though we'll have the orange color. Now, we're also adding a lot of luminance to this light, and that's one of the bonuses I'm gonna show here in just a little bit. Fixing the problem though, we need to get color back in those achromatic areas. So, take a look at the flash shot. Clicking that eye icon and hitting Alt, I can turn off all other layers but it. Anyways, I go over to the flash layer, and the key to this is that I wanna use an eyedropper. I'm gonna select the color selector tool here and I wanna select a color nearby those shadows. I'm gonna select that color there and just say okay. Now I'm gonna turn on all the other layers and that's by clicking that eye icon and hitting Alt. Go up to the very top layer, select that, and we wanna make a color fill layer. So you can go up to the layer menu and you would say that you want a new fill layer solid color. You can name it whatever you'd like if you're doing a bunch of these for higher end work, but the mode that you want it in is color. When you click OK, you're now going to get the color dialog showing the color that you just selected. Click OK on that. Go to the mask and invert it. You can do Control I. Now you can use a brush, and for right now you can just get real sloppy and just brush in there. Don't worry about hitting the fan, we're gonna fix that here in a second. You can see now that the colors are blending in because we're adding the color back to those shadows. This is without it, and you can see that there's an orange streak right here. That goes away when we brush in the color. We're giving it what it lacks. Since it was achromatic, it lacked that color, so we put the color back into it. So it's a matter now of just going back and forth, and here I'll add in a little bit more ambient, here I'll add in a little bit more color until you get it the way that you want. Now, some bleed over happened, possibly. For instance, let's say this was a wooden fan, and we also don't want that much ambient light on that little bulb. This is easy enough to fix with newer versions of Photoshop. Let me zoom out here just a little bit. And what we're gonna do is under the Quick Selection tool, there's a new object selection tool that's been in since about uh, 2021. Select that, and now make sure that it has checked up here, sample all layers. And then you can just drag around where that ceiling fan is and it'll select that ceiling fan. You can see the marching ants are all around it. Now you can go down to the color fill layer on its mask and just press the delete key. And also if you want to, you can go down to that ambient layer and press delete also. Or if you want, we'll back out of that, you can just decide to erase out of that selection where you'd like. So I'll just erase some of that around the bulb because I like the ambient light around some of those blades. So that starts bringing that back. There you go. Now, one other tip here real quick. You can see that fixed it, but the ceiling still looks a little bit orange. Now, you know I've got other color correction techniques. I've shown them in other videos. I have them throughout my books, especially the advanced editing book. But here, we're gonna do one real quick that I show, and I love to do this for ceilings like this. They're supposed to be white, but they tend to get discolored. We're gonna zoom out here a little bit. Go to the top layer. Select the polygon tool, the polygon lasso tool. Up here, draw a polygon around that white ceiling. Close it by double clicking when you get close. Go up to the select menu, and you want to modify this selection. So you modify, and we want to feather it. In the feathering, select about a feather radius of five pixels. Now we want a new adjustment layer. So you go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we want a hue saturation layer. You can call it whatever you'd like. What that did was make a hue saturation layer with, as you can see over here, just the ceiling selected. Now we can move the saturation slider to the left to start desaturating some of that ceiling. And there we go. This is how we started with this uh, flash shot showing a lot of shadows. We were to fix it with some ambient, added more ambient to it. We added then color back in where it should have been and then desaturated the ceiling to make it even better. And that's all there was to fix those orange shadows.